2020 will be for Ghana. And the year after that, Germany will also decide. Angela Merkel is now technically halfway into her final term as German Chancellor. Well, that's because it's unsetting that the coalition government with the Social Democrat SPD party will last till 2021. Well, fresh elections may just bring some answers, but there are already assumptions that with Angela Merkel busy keeping her own coalition together, French President Emmanuel Macron is increasingly gaining influence within the EU. But what does that mean for both Europe and Africa? Thomas Farrow is political correspondent with our partners DW. He may have some answers for us in our usual crossover to Berlin in Germany. Thomas, good to have you once again. Now let's begin with the uncertainty. It is uncertain that the coalition government with the Social uh, Democrat Party will last till 2021. But why is that? I think we have to understand a bit of context, uh, Gifty, and by the way, hello to you and to your audience in, in Ghana. When we talk about that context, we have to remember that election in 2017, Angela Merkel, after that election, had a lot of trouble trying to form a new government here in Germany, and yeah. governments in Germany are usually formed by two or more parties joining forces and forming a coalition, and what happened back then is that there were long negotiations over months and only after a long period of time did the Social Democrats, in other words one of the biggest parties here in Germany, decide reluctantly to work with Angela Merkel's Conservatives. It was described at the time more as a marriage of convenience rather than as a marriage of love and as such there has been a lot of quarrelling ever since. The Social Democrats are facing a very big crisis here in Germany and there is that image at least portrayed that this is a coalition that is not working very well. When you look at what promises the coalition has, able to, has been able to achieve, you will see, and there was a recent study published not long ago, that they have been able to address more than 60% of the promises that they had in the coalition agreement. However, if you look at the image that has been portrayed, uh, it does seem that the coalition is, uh, there's a lot of infighting within the coalition and that it's having a lot of problems trying to bring forward some of its key pi uh, priorities and policies, for example, when it comes uh, to foreign policy. So you have these key issues and there is a lot of speculation here in Germany as to whether Angela Merkel will manage to fulfill her goal to leave office after her current term ends in 2021 or whether the quarrelling will become too big and one of the partners will pull out, which would lead to fresh elections here in Germany. If you ask the German government, if you ask the German chancellor, she has always said time and time again that her intention, her goal, is to end, until, uh, to end her government in 2021, where there will be uh, the current elections planned for that period. Hmm. It looks as if there may be, I mean, along the line, and looking at, based on experience, that fresh elections may become necessary along the line. Um, why is that the case also? This is important to understand because uh, if you look again at German politics and how it works, we have these coalitions and when one of the members of the coalition pulls out, there are different possibilities. A minority government could be one possibility, but fresh elections would be another one. And that is something that, by the way, the uh, government parties want to avoid because they are facing a lot of trouble also when it comes to voter intention. But it's important to think about this not only from an internal perspective because your viewers may think, well, that's happening in Germany, but what does this mean internationally? And if you look at that, then you'll clearly understand that when Angela Merkel and her coalition partners are basically focused on trying to solve that infighting, those local issues, many have said that they have left aside some of the key international topics that uh, have been a priority in the past. I'll just give you a couple of uh, mentions there. One of them, for example, is climate policy, whereas at the beginning of Angela Merkel's term, many, many years ago, she had clearly focused on climate protection and had even been dubbed the climate chancellor. That was left aside in particular because there were other issues that were at the forefront of the uh, political agenda, migration, for example, and she has been criticized now a lot for leaving that aside, for not focusing enough when it comes to climate, and as such, that has been one of the big criticisms here. So we're not only talking about internal problems in the German government, we're talking also about how these problems affect Germany's position internationally. And when we talk about Germany's position internationally, we also have to address Africa, because you and I, Gifty, have spoken about this many times in the past, but the German Chancellor in particular has had a clear focus when it comes to Africa yeah. policy, to trying to work hand-in-hand -hand with countries in Africa 
Africa and also in particular uh, with Ghana, something that is evident, for example, in this Alliance for multi Multilateralism, a very difficult word <laughs> that I'm pretty sure we'll discuss in a second. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we will get there, but then if you look at the bigger picture, it, it suggests that Angela Merkel may be ceding some, some level of influence within the EU to a rather young uh, French President Emmanuel Macron. Elaborate on that a bit. That seems to be the case if you look at some of the recent developments, for example, trying to get uh, negotiations with Iran and the United States, something that was evident recently in New York during the United Nations General Assembly. Um, but at the same time, Angela Merkel has been clear when you ask her about that, that she intends to fulfill her goals also when it comes to foreign policy and that she intends to tackle some of Germany's international priorities just as she has been trying to do in the past. But again, this is something that you have to understand in context, in perspective, because the EU, obviously you have 27 or 28 uh, members, mm. depending on what you include, whether you include the United Kingdom or you don't, but say 28 members for now. Mm. And there are ideas here that if you have a powerful Germany and a powerful France working hand in hand, trying to push some of the uh, key international priorities, then the EU will work better. That is something very controversial. Some of the members in the eastern part of the European Union think that that is not something positive for the bloc. But however, from a German perspective and from a, a French perspective, Germany and France have been trying to work hand in hand when it comes to pushing some of the key international priorities, not only at a European level, but also from both countries, from the perspective of both countries. And what has happened is that Germany, in particular Angela Merkel, has been focused more and more on this internal problem, on these internal issues, whereas Emmanuel Macron has given at least the impression that he's the one taking the lead when it comes to some of the international dilemmas and international politics. Again, this is controversial and divisive. So there are some people who say, no, Angela Merkel is still very much in the driving seat. There are others who say, well, now Macron is taking the lead. A middle ground would be that both leaders are trying to find common ground and have, as such have been trying in the past few years to bring some of those uh, po policies together to the table and try and address them when it comes, for example, to Africa, when it comes to relations with the United States, when it comes to trade, when it comes to Iran, when it comes to Syria. All these issues have been absolutely vital not only for Germany but also for France and wider also for the European Union as a whole. Well, if you ask me, I'll say that one leader cannot do it all alone, and especially since I'm female, I'll, I'll, I'll always go for Angela Merkel, uh, for that matter. That's if I have a say at all. But looking at the, the way that these power dynamics are working, Germany recently hosted the first meeting of, of this alliance you mentioned, and it's made up of 50 countries. These are countries committing themselves to boost international cooperation, and Ghana is a part of that group. What are the implications of a Macron leadership in the EU, uh, EU or on the alliance and its work? Gifty, I would agree with you totally that one leader cannot change everything single-handedly and in fact that has been one of the key policies of Angela Merkel in office, that idea of shared leadership, of multilateralism, of a steady hand and when you look at multilateralism the word implies that leadership is not something that only one government or one leader does and that's something that Germany and France by the way have tried to push forward with this alliance for multilateralism. The, there was a meeting about that alliance or by members of that alliance in the uh, United Nations General Assembly and the goal there, a very loose goal, is precisely to try and have governments and have countries with similar goals to try and tackle some of those issues together. That is probably the key word. It is a rather loose alliance because it's not based on a sort of formal membership that they will always okay. work together on every single issue. It is more a matter of trying to understand what the key policies are internationally and what countries could have similar interests and similar ways of viewing those problems and then could, in addition to that, obviously work together. And that is seen as a reaction to some of those populist, uh, nationalist forces that have been gaining ground in so many countries around the world. Um, mm. It is not seen as something directly against, for example, that idea of America first in the United States, although there have been plenty of analysis saying that it is a reaction to that, and that is a reaction in a way trying to get countries that think together 
to try and work on that idea of shared leadership. So again, coming back to that point that you mentioned uh, earlier, that idea that only one country can solve the world's problems, that is not something that Germany or France believe in. They believe in shared leadership, in working together, and that working together is something that comes uh, very naturally in this alliance for multilateralism, although again it, it has had some controversy because some people say that it is too loose, that, uh, that it shouldn't be uh, the case, and some have also been a bit reluctant to join because in particular they are very close to the United States. Mm. So we have to see it a bit with a sort of pinch of salt, but in general this is an idea that Germany has brought forward in order to try not only and have uh, more influence internationally, but also to try and show this idea of shared leadership of multilateralism as a whole. Certainly a way to go. But how do Germans finally, how do Germans feel about all of these? If you ask me about uh, multilateralism, I think uh, this is a term that is difficult for Germans to grasp. There have been analysis pointing towards that fact, but in, ge in general, Germans are very wary of unique leadership, of this idea that only one country can solve uh, the problems. Germans tend to favor that idea of working together with other countries, of sharing the burden, of trying to find partners around the world. This is something that, by the way, not only now but in the past, Germans have been very interested in, in trying to make sure that whatever policies the country focuses on internationally, those are policies that are dealt and discussed and uh, analyzed with other countries as well. That does not mean that in some cases Germany has not made unilateral decisions, unilateral decisions that, by the way, have been criticized. Mm. But in general, one of the main ideas of German foreign policy is this idea of shared uh, burdens, of shared leadership, and that is one that I would believe many Germans do tend to favor. Thomas, interesting discussion we've had. Uh like I said, 2020 will be a very politically charged uh, a moment for Ghana. And it looks like n there isn't a lot of interval between that and what happens in Germany. We'll be keeping a, 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 a close eye on that. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thomas Sparrow is political correspondent with our partners, DW. He joins us all the way from Berlin, as you know, every Wednesday. This is still The Pulse with me, Gifty, and Pierre.